England versus Australia, another huge quarterfinal matchup this weekend. We've got a lot to dissect, we've got a lot to analyze, and I'm going to give you my preview of this match. Kia ora everyone, my name is Zach, I love rugby, welcome back to Hakka Time Rugby. Now England came into this Rugby World Cup as one of the top three, or one of the favorites really, based on their preparation in 2019. They've had a great year, and under the guide of Eddie, Eddie Jones, they very much put themselves in a position that they could go all the way in this World Cup. From an Australia perspective, now they came in with very much mixed results, but they, they would take a lot of confidence out of that game that they played against the All Blacks, where they smashed them in Perth. I think if they can recreate that, then they can very much be in this battle and, um, and, and trouble a lot of teams. Now, in terms of the World Cup itself and the performances, for England, it's very much job done. Now, they've had some mixed performances, but in every game, they've got the result, they've got the bonus points, and that's all you can ask for. Now, they go into this game slightly underdone. I mean, the game against uh, France obviously was cancelled. Um, as a result, they haven't had that continuity. How will that play into the matches? It remains to be seen, but that could be a factor. Um, but ultimately, from an English perspective, they've done everything they've needed to do to put them in this position. They're in the quarterfinal, and they come through with a clean sheet. For Australia, now they did go down against Wales in what was a tight match. I just think from an Australian perspective, there have been a number of moments in different games where they have dropped their performance a little bit. Against Fiji in that first half, um, Fiji played very, very well. And we're actually on top of Australia in that first half. Now, Australia came back with a great performance in the second half and their ability to game manage, play tactically and use their forwards, I think, was telling in that game. Um, and also against Wales, they really let Wales get away from them in the first half and they couldn't pull them back in the second half. Now, you can look at that two ways. There's been two halves where Australia maybe haven't implied themselves, dropped their heads a little bit, and as a result, allowed the um, opposition to get into the game. Or you can take the other view that they really closed out games very, very well. And if they can bring that determined approach, then they can be competitive in these games. Now, this has got the feeling now of a bit of an old-fashioned Aussie, um, Aussie battle. You've got two Australian coaches. Um, in actual fact, they're mates. And um, Eddie Jones uh, had, a, had a nice statement about this clash saying that there is someone up in, um, up in heaven who will be looking down on them, proud of their achievements and proud that they're going at each other in this. But from an Aussie perspective, I mean, they, they will bring everything. Both sides will bring everything. Both sides will want to win. Australians are known as competitive. So uh, I think we're going to very much see that from the coaching booths in this one. Check out, I've been a little bit disappointed with his performance um, in this World Cup, particularly in the media. He's been a bit of a whinger um, from time to time. Um, he's certainly, uh, he's blamed refs, he's blamed uh, inconsistencies, he said uh, discrimination against the Australian team. But you do get the fact, you do get this feeling from Checker that he is a real battler. He's one of these Aussie battlers that you just, you know he's got something in him, you know he's got that fire in him and he's got to bring everything to this match. And I think we see some of that in the selection. So there's a couple of key talking points we need to get to around the selections. Um, we'll start with England, so obviously uh, Marco Vunipola comes in. Uh, there's been a lot made about Marla versus Vunipola. I think you go with the world-class um, player that Vunipola is. He's proven it over this World Cup cycle. For the Lions, he was outstanding in their, um, in their performances against uh, New Zealand, uh, where they were able to secure that draw in terms of the series. And he's just a world-class guy, so that's fine. Now, they bring Courtney Laws into the locking uh, partner with uh, Itoji. So that says to me that they are looking for some level of mobility there. I think between Itoji and, um, and Laws, they are probably the two most athletic locks in the English team. So that's fine. They're obviously wanting to play a faster pace or at least combat what they expect to be a fast pace from, uh, from Australia. Uh, and then probably the big talking point, um, George Ford is on the bench which means that they've reshuffled on Farrell to play 10, and then obviously they've got um, uh, their centre pairing there. So for me, that says, I think they're going to look to, one, target the centre's um, the Australian midfield, but two, I think defensively they bring a lot more with this combination of fly half and centre pairing. So it looks like that's going to be an area of focus for this England team, and I'm not. let's not be surprised if Tui Lange is continually just running straight into that Australian midfield, um, bashing through. Um, on the Australian side, I think we all expected this this backline. Um, sorry, we did not expect this backline. Obviously, the big talking point is uh, is Jordan Patel. The young man gets his opportunity. Now, I like this. I really, really like the selection. And got to give Checker a bit of 
crit here. As I say, that mentality of the Aussie battler, he's bringing it to the table, he's firing all shots, he's not going to die wondering, he's putting the young man in there, and I actually think it's a great selection. I think having a young guy in there who's full of energy and full of life, it can actually lift a team, particularly where you have either stagnated in terms of your... Um, uh, performances or maybe attitude has dropped a little bit a young guy coming and getting his shot on the world stage can lift a team and I, I won't be surprised if, if Patea has a standout game here he really is a talent go and watch any of his YouTube clips he's, he's a very very good player yes he's unproven but Australia has nothing to lose they're not favored in this match so it's clear that they are throwing everything at this game they're gonna fire all the shots they can and it's a huge call I mean someone like James O'Connor who has play continuously throughout this World Cup, not to feature in this match is a huge call. I think it's the right call, but it's a big call, and I don't think all coaches would be able to make that decision um, come World Cup quarterfinal time. So well done to Checker on that one. Um, Lelia Fano comes in at the 10. Uh, I would have seen, preferred Tumor, although Tumor is on the bench. Um, it just seems like he's offered a little bit more, and where they have... As I mentioned, Australia have a, had a number of first halves where they've dropped a little bit. When they've injected someone like Tumor, then he's able to steer the ship back on track, uh, provide energy, attack and flair, and um, and push them forward uh, and get some of those key key wins. Um, and maybe that's the thinking here: as you start with Lelia Fano and then you bring on Tumor to close. Obviously, squads now are not merely a 15 and starting versus coming off the bench finishing. Um, they go hand in hand really these days in terms of the, the wider squad and selection. So probably okay with that. Lelia Fano brings a bit more in terms of his kicking game, ability to run the team around the track. Um, and obviously Tamua can come in as that closer towards the end. Now the next thing, uh, the, let's talk about the breakdown. So I'm a big fan of Underhill and Curry. They are a couple of really, really good young guys, but they come up against probably the best um, breakdown pairing in, uh, in in the loose forward space in the game. Um, Poop, Pooper is the com name of the combination, but Pocock and Hooper, um, they come in here and, I mean, they're world-class. Those two guys are world-class. So I expect them to try and secure some dominance there. Um, I expect with those two guys, if they have a great game and get on top here, then it could be a long night for England. Um, so that's the squads. That's the squad selections. Now, in terms of the key points, the key um, uh, ways for these teams to secure victory. So from an English perspective, it is clear they're going to target that midfield. So they're going to get a guy like um, Tuilangi running straight in and, and they've had a lot of great success with that approach so I expect that to happen Owen Farrell defensively is incredible and I think they are going to I think they are worried a little bit about defense in this match I mean the introduction of laws to get that mobility um, to counteract some of the Australian mobility in their forward pack the selection here looks very much from a defensive perspective very solid in the midfield and the fly halves um, but also England has some key strike uh, with their back three. I think they've got between Watson, um, Day and Daly, they've got an outstanding back three. Um, really electric and they could really light this game up as well. So if they can attack that midfield and utilize that back three, they can get on top here very, very well. In particular, if they can neutralize the impact of um, Pocock and Hooper, uh, that'll be a key to victory for them. For Australia, you're in a quarterfinal and you're giving yourself a chance. That's the most important thing. Now it is uh, an approach of not dying, wondering. So I'd like to see Checker really galvanize this team before the match. They're not, and I think he will, they are not favored to win this game. But like all Australian battlers, can they come in here? Can they secure the win and can they go forward? In terms of my prediction, I am predicting that England will win this in a close one. Australia is going to be better. Oh, we've got someone at the door. I think that's my new All Blacks top uh, arriving. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back and look what just arrived. It's a brand new All Blacks top. I will be wearing that tomorrow while watching the quarterfinal. Okay, so other keys to victory in this game. Now, there's a there's a very very important topic we need to we need to cover here. Um, this World Cup has been plagued with referee and TMO interference, particularly around the contact area. One guy that has been involved in many of these incidents, Owen Farrell. Um, for me, and not only that, but the TMO here is Ben Skeen. Now, anyone who has watched my channels knows um, that I'm not a fan of this guy. Um, from a TMO perspective, what he seems to do is he just 
goes back through all of the footage and he tries to find little incidents. He's well known for raising incidents to the referee, pausing the game. As a collective of referees, they all review the footage, all um, who has been, it's been put forward by Ben Skeen. So I think he will definitely have an impact on this game and we could see cards playing a factor here. Um, I expect it to be more on the Australian side. They seem to be a bit more... Um, uh, I think England's just a bit more settled in terms of the way they approach their defence. Um, but if there is a card on, uh, against England, it could have a significant impact on this game. So being able to manage those referees and keep very, very disciplined around the tackling area is going to be a key to victory for both teams. Now the predictions. The prediction. So as I mentioned, England come in here and they've done everything right. Their preparation has been good. Um, they've managed to secure the three wins and three bonus points, exactly what they needed to do. Um, you've got Eddie Jones at the helm. He's familiar with Japan. Um, he's also familiar with this Australian team. He's a great mate of Michael Checker. I think he'll know exactly what to expect, both from the crowd, from the conditions, and from Australia. Look, there are no excuses here for England. You've got every single thing in your favour, and they should win this, and they should win it comfortably. However, I do think Michael Checker and this Australian team will galvanise themselves for this game. We know what Australians are like in major tournaments. They do not die wondering. The selection from uh, Checker is very much, uh, we're going to throw everything at you, and let's not die wondering. That's what I see here. He's an Aussie battler, and he's bringing that mentality to this game. I still think England will be too, too good, but it's going to be closer than most people think. I predict England to win this by four points. And let me just say, I would not be surprised if Australia pulled this out. Would not be surprised at all. Against the All Blacks in Perth, they looked incredible, right? They looked like they could go on and beat anyone. And if they bring that to the table, if Czech is able to galvanize them, and if a young guy gets who has his opportunity now um, is able to have a good game, he could be a breakout star of this World Cup, then anything can happen. And that's the key. You're in a quarterfinal, you've given yourself a chance, and anything can happen. That's it from me anyway, guys. So... Let me know your thoughts in this game. Um, what do you like about each of the teams? What do you think they've, um, uh, what are the other key talking points? What do you think of my analysis? Um, and who's going to win? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We are covering everything Rugby World Cup up until the end of it. Love to have you guys involved in the conversation and enjoy the rest of the Rugby World Cup. See you guys.